This is Los Angeles, one of the least corrupt cities in the United States. And its police force is one of the most honest and efficient in the world. But it wasn't always so. Yeah, they're on the way. Do you know who that is? It's Margot Kane. A movie star? You're kidding. That's who it is. Marcia, you gotta listen to me. I think I'm in trouble. You're kidding. Yeah, I took that last call you gave me. Mr. Martin? Yeah, but when I got there, two guys were waiting for me. Then one guy tried to grab me. Oh, oh. Where are you now? In a phone booth on the corner of Washington and 7th. Well, uh, listen, honey, uh, uh, Jake isn't here right now, and I, but I can find a number where he is, I think. I haven't got time to wait for Jake. Okay. Well, all right. Uh, listen, sit tight. I'll drive over there myself and get you. Seven seven two one. Got it. All right, let's get out. Well, look, honey, I don't care whether you like it or not. Now wait a minute, just a minute. Oh, that's very picturesque, but I don't understand that kind of language. See, I'm just a relief girl. Oh, Jake, please be there, please. Police department, vice squad, Sergeant Taylor speaking. Jake, is that you? Marcia, where are you? Jake, something funny's going on. I need you. Well, what are you talking about? Where are you? Rosie's in some kind of trouble, and, and, and I need you over here. Can you come over, hurry? Well, tell me where you are. Oh, uh, the, the auto court on 7th and Washington. Please hurry. Okay, I'll be right there. <laughs> Anything. He's dead. Oh, 
Who is he? I don't know. His name is Martin Levy. The theatrical agent. That must be Mr. Martin. I, I told Rosie to meet him here about two hours ago. Did she kill him? Huh? No. I told you there were there were two other guys, and they took her and they put her in this car. Jake, her hands were tied and they had a gag on her mouth and everything. Come on, we better get out of here. She lives here. I know she does. Uh, this is the address I send the mail to. Is it possible she could have moved out? No. No. Oh, I'm scared. They took her away, and now this? Uh, what's happened to her? Marcia. Oh, I'm afraid Rosie's a goner. See how it looks to the cops? One of our clients gets a little rough with her. She knocks him off, then she goes south for the winter. The cops don't care. They won't even look for her. But why? Because somebody wanted Martin Levy dead, and her prints are all over the room at that auto court. They're probably going to find her at the bottom of Catalina Channel. Dad, you think she's dead? Yeah. Hey, look, I could be wrong. I thought Brooklyn was going to win the pennant last year. But why Rosie? I don't know. Just at the wrong place in the wrong time. Listen, Jake, I know this girl. I know all about her. She has this cat named Timothy, and her mother's a diabetic. And her brother stopped writing her when he found out that she was a prostitute. You know something funny? We're friends, and I, I've never even seen her. We just talk on the telephone. Maybe it's better that way, huh? We've got to do something. What are we going to do? That, uh, that license number, the one you took yeah. down? Let me have that. I'll run a trace on that. Can Come you read on. that? Mm -hmm. You better get to bed, get some sleep. Okay. outside my apartment, and I think they're trying to get in. Can you get over here fast? I'm scared. I'm going to go hide in the attic.
Yeah, come on down, sweetheart. I saw with Rosie, he put her into a car. Are you sure? I I'm positive. Well, he doesn't have any identification on him. Listen, ordinarily, I don't recommend this, but I think we ought to take him into the cops. But we can't tell him anything about Rosie, okay? They'll book him for breaking and entering, and uh, that way we'll find out who he is. What the hell is going on here, Sergeant? This guy broke into Miss Finch's apartment. I'm off duty in a half hour, and I'm tired, and I've had just about as much of your mouth as I'm going to put up with. Why is she under arrest then? She's under arrest because she was observed leaving the scene of a murder. We have a motel manager statement to that effect. Yeah, who was murdered? A Hollywood agent named Martin Levy. So why am I under arrest? Well, I don't know, honey. It just seemed like a good idea at the time. Matron, get her out of here. Well, I should remember. Don't say a word until Michael Brim gets here. But, Jake, I didn't do anything. Well, that doesn't seem to matter with these L.A. cops. What? Thanks. Hey, don't, Jake. Lieutenant, look, I want to call my attorney. Now, this guy here is saying that I can't make a telephone call. Shut up! Lieutenant, I'm allowed to make one phone call. Around here, you ain't allowed nothing. You need a ticket to get in the toilet. If you get arrested in the middle of the night again, Jake, so help me, I'm not even gonna come down here. Mike, where's Marsha? I've been able to find Marsha. Maybe if I had a decent night's sleep. Wait a minute, what are you talking about? You can't find Marsha. She was checked into this hotel right along with me last Don't night. Don't blow up at me. You're lucky that I found a companion to get you out. How about the other guy? What other guy? What do you mean, what other guy? The guy that broke into Marsh's place. He was booked right along with us last night. Wait a minute. I read all the arrest reports. There was no other guy. It can't be. No other guy. I don't understand that. What do you do, have coffee and donuts with Quint and go home? Maybe. All I know is that you were in the can, Marsha can't be found, and there's no record of any other fellow. I don't understand it. Okay, then here's what we got to do. All the judges in town that owe you favors, we gotta cash those chips, Mike. We gotta turn up Marsha and we gotta turn her up fast. Do you mind telling me what's going on? Oh, I wish I knew. That's what I'm trying to do is check it out. By the way, did you uh, get that license number for me? Yeah, it's registered to uh, Superior Pictures in Hollywood. A movie studio? Yeah. What do you want? Me, Jacques Brochette. Uh, I beg your pardon? Je m'appelle Jacques Frochette, le directeur du cinéma. Oh, yeah. Uh, do you know where your offices are, Mr. Franchette? Oh, uh, cheeky baby. I just make a big deal here, eh? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, okay, go ahead. Huh? <laughs> off on the corner of Hollywood and Vine. For about 20 minutes? Then we can make the other arrangements? All right. Carl, come here. Yes, sir. Excuse me, Carl. We do it this afternoon. I don't know, Mr. Fontaine. It sounds funny to me. Broad daylight. These on a level? 
I know this guy, Carl. If he says it's all right, it's all right. What do you say? Whatever you say. You made a deal, didn't you? You made a deal to sell Marsha, huh? How much was it, Quint? Five thousand dollars. I'm gonna get you for this, you hear me? If anything happens to her, I'm gonna kill you. You got that? I want Marsha safe and sound, or you're dead. And I'm crazy enough to do it, and you know it. You better give this money back. <laughs> get my number? I broke into your office. You what? I said I broke into your office. Right now I'm uh, sitting behind your desk, smoking one of your beautiful Havana cigars and uh, playing with your paperweight. Seems to be some sort of a brass cartridge. Listen, uh, whoever you are... Um... Axminster. Jake Axminster. Listen, I'll write it down for you and I'll uh, put it under your blotter with all your other names and numbers. You, uh, you better get out of there, Rev. Uh... Now listen to me, Mr. Fontaine, and get this straight. Marsha Finch is a friend of mine, and if anything happens to her, I'll come back here and I'll blow your gray flannel head right off its shoulders. And if you don't think I'm crazy enough to do that, just ask your friend, Lieutenant Quint. Yeah. Thanks, mister. He's sitting in my office. 
Oh, he was. You better get some cops out there, Quint. I already called studio security. There's no way he's going to get off that lot. You'd better, Quint. I made a deal with you and I kept my end of it. You'd better come up with your end of it. This guy acts, Mr. He's your problem. Then he went out over there. I don't know where the heck he went. Quint's got every harness bull in town looking for you. Never mind about that, Dow. Uh... What's happening with Marsha? I haven't found her yet, but I'm keeping the pressure on. They must be shuttling her from one precinct to the next. What about you? What have you turned up? I found out who the buyer is. Who? Oh. Daryl Fontaine. Daryl Fontaine, the movie producer? What does he want with Marsha? He wants her dead. She was a witness to a murder. Who did Fontaine kill? A Hollywood agent named Martin Levy and a girl named Rose Bates. Of course, he didn't do it himself. He had his gopher do it. Listen, Mike, I want you to do me a favor. See if you can find out what Martin Levy did yesterday before he showed up dead at that auto court. Jake, look, I got a desk full of... <laughs> All right, never mind. What about you? I'm going to have a talk with Harry Kahn. With Harry Kahn, the head of Superior Pictures, just going to walk in and talk to him? Well, nobody walks in on Harry Kahn. He's going to come to see me. Uh, listen, Mike, you keep up the pressure on Quint. I don't think he's ready to cough up Marsha yet. I want to try to get some sleep. See you later. <laughs> You mean? Look, Lieutenant, you got no right to keep me like this, not letting me call Jake or anybody. Now listen, Marsha, that fella's still on the loose and looking for you. Now I can take you home right now, but I can't guarantee what's going to happen. Now do you want me to take you home? Well... Now you know what we're doing's best for you. Now you know that's so. I guess. Have you had dinner yet? How about some dessert? Would you like a nice uh, ice cream soda? <laughs> Francis, you take Marcia and get her an ice cream soda. But make sure she doesn't get out of the car. We don't want to take any chances with you. Lieutenant, I'm sorry I got mad at you. I understand. And don't worry, everything's going to be all right. Lieutenant? The fine X Mister? Francis, if I found Axminster, would I be schlepping this broad around like a yo-yo? Well, I guess not. Well, what do we do with her? You buy her a soda. Sweetheart, I already told you who this is. This is Saul Benjamin. I'm in Suite 26 in Building C. You got that? I've never heard of you. Well, I never heard of you either, honey. That makes us even. Now, look, you be a good little girl. You send me over three secretaries and a couple of typewriters. Also, I need some stationery and some of those script covers, okay? See, I'm starting my picture soon. I'm preparing now. Uh, it's, uh, it's called Song of the Sheik. We go into production in a couple of weeks. Well, I'll have to check with Mr. Khan's office. Well, wait a minute. I don't care who you check it out with. You just get those people over here right away. I gotta go to work. What are these girls doing here? Get out of here! I got nobody named Saul Benjamin working on this lot. He won't take Come your call, I don't care what he does. Where is his bump? Sweet 26. I don't make no rock crummy sheik pictures. You, out! Everybody out. Go on, out, out. I don't like sheiks. Hey, you! Back to the office. Don't send nothing down here. No typewriters, no secretaries, no nothing. You understand? Yes, sir. Hop it. 
What are you girls doing in here? Out, out, out. Come on, nobody works in here. Get out. What are you... Hey, Harry, how you doing? You look like you're gaining weight. What are you doing here? Hey, you better watch your temper. You know what could happen? You could have a heart attack. You'll wind up in one of those wards where you have to suck your oh, food oh, through you're a straw. You're some kind of a wise guy. guy. I know you. You're that Brewminster. No, Axminster. Jake Axminster, Harry. What do you think I am? Some kind of a jamoke you can go pushing your way into the studio? You know who I am? I run this place! Hey, I'm, I'm, gonna... I'm nuts, man! I'm gonna spread you all over that ceiling. You better start answering some questions fast. Are you ready? For what? First question, how was Daryl Fontaine connected with Martin Levy? <laughs> Is that all you want to know? Oh, that's easy. Everybody knows that. But Margot Kane was represented by Martin Levy. He was her agent before she died. Then Margot Kane was in Fontaine's last picture. Yeah. What was Margot Kane doing with Daryl Fontaine? What was going on there? Look, they was having an affair. Everybody knows that. I kept it out of the columns, but it was a big thing. They was always either fighting or running down to Newport and making up. When Margot Kane was killed, where was Daryl Fontaine? Uh, let's see, uh, they finished the picture on the 18th. And there was a big party. And then there was a big fight. And she threw liquor in his face, and he hit her. Is that all? They made up, like always. And uh, the next night, they was at the Trocadero, sitting at their regular table like a couple of lovebirds, having dinner. After dinner, he puts her in a studio car and he sends her home. And then him and some of the studio press guys, they goes down to the airport and he flies up to San Francisco. Two days later, they find Margot's body on the beach. Suicide. And that's the last time they were together? It's the last time anybody saw Margot. Oh, the poor kid. I mean, some of these kids can't take it. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know what you mean, Harry. Did you hear about Martin Levy, huh? No. Last night, he got murdered. Oh, I'm terribly sorry about that. You don't sound sorry. Look, he was an agent! Oh, what do you want off of me, huh? Who is Darla Powell? Some bimbo that Fontaine wants to use in his next picture. I don't know why. So we put her under contract. I got one last question for you, Harry. Yeah? How yeah. do I get out of here without getting arrested? Ha! You don't! This is my studio, and you're not gonna make it to the gate. You've been fooling around with the wrong guy, Mr. Crazy Man. You're messing with Harry Kahn. I got a memory like a camel I never forget. It's an elephant, Harry. Even elephants. I want to tell you something. You are in big trouble. Big trouble. I'm sorry to hear that, Harry. I really am. Jake. I don't know how you did it, but from all I can tell, Quint's still got Marcia somewhere within the police department. He hasn't turned her over yet. I threatened to kill him. I guess he believes me. Oh, fantastic. Look. You want to know what Martin Levy did the day before yesterday? He made 25 telephone calls. And the last one to Daryl Fontaine. Mm -hmm. Then he walked out of his office and got killed. No, no, not exactly. What do you mean? I talked to his secretary. Seems that he hung around the office for about an hour or so, nervous as hell. And then he was picked up by a chauffeur-driven limousine. That was the last that she saw. Now, look. Two of these calls lasted over 20 minutes. One was to an agent named Mason Terry, and the other was to the movie star Clark Branch. You got a nickel? Uh, hello, is this Mason Terry? Yeah, who's this? Uh, just a minute. Uh, yeah, listen, uh, go ahead, book him. And uh, take his prints, match him up with those late ones we got off the banister. I'm sorry, please, uh, go ahead, sir. Are you with the police? Yes, uh, my name's Lieutenant Quint, Homicide, LAPD. Well, how can I help you, Lieutenant? Yesterday afternoon, around 4.10, you got a call from a man named Martin Levy. He talked to you for about 20 minutes. What was that conversation about? Well, it was uh, personal. I'd rather not... Look, Mr. Terry, we got a full-blown homicide here. Uh, Mr. Levy caught a bad case of dead last night. I could send a car over there and have you brought downtown. Look, I, um... Yeah? Well, he wanted to know about the Castle of Dreams, that's all. Castle of Dreams, huh? What's that? I mean, what do you want to talk about it for? I think you'd better send that car over here. You sure about that? I'm pretty damn sure you're not a cop. Goodbye. <sighs> Mike, what do you know about the Castle of Dreams? Well, I know it's a private club, and you really got to know the right people to get in there. Well, maybe that's what Martin Levy was calling about. 
Maybe Martin Levy was trying to reach the right people, you know? Mike, wait. Suppose Margot Kane didn't commit suicide. Suppose Martin Levy found out she'd been murdered. By Darrell Fontaine? Yeah. And Fontaine would have to get rid of Martin Levy. That makes sense. I know, except for one thing. Take a look at this. 20 minutes after that photograph was taken, Daryl Fontaine was on a plane to San Francisco and Margot Kane was alive. And Fontaine didn't kill her. But he must have. He had to. It's the only thing that makes any sense. Otherwise, why would he have killed Martin Levy? Jake, you can find out why Martin Levy circled the girl in this picture. You might have the answer. Maybe you got some. Now look, you were just talking to somebody about the Castle of Dreams. What's that got to do with this? I don't know. But I'm gonna find the right people, and I'm gonna get into the Castle of Dreams tonight. You know, you played very well today. A few more lessons like that, and we'll have you playing at Wimbledon. <laughs> Thanks, Lamp. Thanks, Gordon. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Branch. I hit that back slam, backhand, and I was coming up like this. I couldn't believe it. Did you see that? Huh? What yeah. about a couple of bucks? What have I got to do? Uh, I'm Jake Axminster. You tell Claude Branch that I'm standing over here, huh? Look, mister, you got it backwards. You see, the way this works, I usually point out uh, Clark Branch to the tourists. I never point the tourists out to Clark. It just doesn't work that way. Well, just this one time, let's try it backwards. Who knows? Could turn into a national trend. It's your money. Uh, excuse me, sir. Yeah. Uh, uh, Mr. Axminster would like to see you. Axminster? Jake, I believe, was the name. Jake? Axminster? Thanks. Um, uh, excuse me, ladies, I'll be right back. You're Jake Axminster? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're the guy that slugged Harry Conn this morning? Mm -hmm. You heard about that, huh? I heard about it. You chipped three of his teeth. He spent the whole morning at the dentist. <laughs> you know, I gotta shake your hand. I've been dying to do that for the last 10 years. Well, he had to come in. Yeah, he sure did. You know, last year once at a party, I wanted to hit him, but he slipped out the back. Look, Mr. Axminster, uh, I gotta tell you, I don't have too many idols, but you've just become one of them. Yeah. Well, thanks a lot. If there's anything I can do for you, anything at all, you just let me know. You mean that? Sure, I mean it. Well, uh... There is one thing. What? I've uh, heard a lot of stories about this castle of dreams. <laughs> you have, huh? Well, now you're going to be able to tell stories about it. When do you want to go? Well, um, could I go tonight, say, uh, around 6 o'clock? I'll have a chauffeur-driven limousine pick you up at 6. And it'll all be on me. That's terrific. Well, where are you staying? I'm at the uh, Dorset house over on Wilshire. I'll be in the bar. Great. That's Excuse great. me, Clark. Our yeah. court's ready now. Okay, I'll I'll be right with you. Listen, uh, who's your favorite movie actress? What? Come on, you know. Who do you want? Oh, <laughs> gee, um, I don't know. Uh, Thelma Hunt. That's a pretty good choice. <laughs> okay, I'll arrange it for you. You have a good time, Jake. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Good luck. All right. Bye bye. Come on, girls. Come watch me play. Come on. yourself up to get killed. Martin Levy was taken up to the Castle of Dreams in a chauffeur-driven limousine, and the next time he showed up. I'll try to be careful, Mike. Look, I'm gonna follow the limousine up there, and I'm gonna hang around outside. Hey, do me a favor. Don't do that, huh? You don't know how to tail anybody. You raise suspicions, and that'll be the end of me. You're not acting like yourself. Do you know that? Sure I am. No, you're not. You, my friend, are Mr. Play It Safe. Ever since this thing began, you've been taking all kinds of stupid chances, such as threatening a police lieutenant. Now this. Well, I don't know, Mike. I just don't know. Jake, I like her, too. Marsha's tops. That doesn't mean you have to go and get yourself killed to save her. Let's take it a little slower and a little safer. 
I got two friends in this life, you and her. She's a little dingy at times. She's crazy. There's times when she makes me mad. And at times when she makes me laugh. Leave me alone, will you? Hey. All I said was, let's take it a little slower and a little safer. Is there some kind of a game? You think that when they screw that gun in your ear, you're going to be able to holler time out? Will you leave me alone? And let you collect a headstone for yourself? Mike, I'm not risking anything because I don't have anything. I'm going to find Marsha. Please come in. Oh, thank you. thank you. May I have your hat, please? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Would you please follow me? Be careful of the steps when you come down. Would you like some champagne? Um, yes, that would be nice. Thank oh, you. Fine. is upstairs getting ready. She just came back from filming at RKO and she got in about an hour ago. She thought maybe you'd like to see some of her film while you wait. Oh, all right, fine. Would you like to have a seat? Thank you. Have a nice evening, sir. Jake, sorry I'm late. Miss Hunt? Call me Thelma. Why don't you pour me a glass of champagne? Okay, Thelma. Say? Yes, I'm afraid I do. Well, let's not spoil our wonderful evening with mundanities. Mundanities? Oh, never. I might be uh, a little abrupt from time to time, but uh, mundane, never. No. You know, you have beautiful eyes. Thank you. The castle of dreams, huh? Must be a lot of beautiful girls here. Is there a girl here named uh, Margot Kane? I'd love to meet her. Margot? Margot's dead. Oh, I don't mean the real Margot Kane. I mean, um, well, you know what I mean. No, I don't know what you mean. Folks, 
sweetheart. The game plane's got to stop. I need some answers. Look, mister, get out of here. I don't want to hear your troubles. I got my own. We got a troublemaker with Susan. Get Tony and Steve up there. Have somebody call Daryl Fontaine. He wanted us to let him know if anybody started asking about Margot Kane. I want to know the name of the girl who pretended to be Margot Kane. I can't tell you that, and for your own good, get out of here! Hey, listen huh? to me. I don't have much time. I got a friend of mine in a lot of trouble. Now, you got to come up with a name! I can't tell you that! I can't! Let's go! Let's go! Come on, let's go! Why are you doing this? Because Margot Kane was killed by Daryl Fontaine, and the only person who can prove it is the girl who is Margot Kane's double. You're crazy! Ah. All right, let's go. Move. Take a look at that picture. Who's that girl? The night that picture was taken, Daryl Fontaine came up here and took that girl away from me. She used to work here. What's her name? Oh, come on, what's her name? Starla Pen. Fontaine made a deal with her. If she helped him establish his alibi, he would make her a star. Oh, oh boy. Fontaine killed Marco the night the picture was finished. By accident, he said. It was one of their fights, only this one went too far. But then he dumped Marco's body into the ocean. Oh, I see. So then he got Darla Powell to double for Marco, and that was his cover. By the time Margot's body washed up on the beach, he was out of town. He had himself a perfect alibi. Did they get him? Yeah. Caught him on his way out of town. He's in jail somewhere out there by the desert. Hey, uh, I got a surprise for you. Yeah? What? In the waiting room right over there. Good. Pondele. Pondele. What kind of horse is Pondelli? Marsha. Hey, Jake! <laughs> How you doing? Oh. Uh, how are you? I'm fine. Are you kidding? What happened? Well, I've been like a kid who got lost and went to the firehouse. I've been riding around in cars and looking at policemen's guns and having real fun. Real fun? Yeah. And listen, Jake, listen. You've been wrong about these policemen, what you've been saying about them. Yeah, I know. I just don't know what I'm talking about. Oh, well, I've been telling you that for a long time. Oh. <laughs> Come on, let's go. Let's go. Oh, out. good. That's good popcorn. I think that will. Hey, Lieutenant, how are you? You want some popcorn? No, thanks. Uh, Jake, I'd like to talk to you alone. Oh, okay. excuse me. I'll see you in a minute, sweetheart. You jammed me up pretty good this time. Cost me, uh... Five grand made me look bad? Or well, maybe I should have sent you a get well card. I'm gonna make you a promise, Jake. Save your breath, huh, Lieutenant? No, I want you to hear it. I want you to think about it and maybe lose a little sleep. Oh, I don't sleep so good already. I'm gonna get you, Jake. And I don't mean for breaking the law. I'm gonna wait till no one's around, and I'm just gonna flat out kill you. <laughs> really? Maybe not today or tomorrow. Maybe uh, next Tuesday, a week from Christmas. But count on it. You're dead. He just ain't been buried yet. Listen to me, Lieutenant. The first time I come to you with a $20 bill, you're gonna forget all about that stuff. The reason you keep me alive is the same reason you keep the crooks in this town alive. Because without us, you're out of business. I know something. 
I really like Lieutenant Quint. He showed me the whole division. Jake, I mean it. He is really nice. You should give him a second chance. Marcia, you're crazy. Come on, let's get out of here. Uh, what? <laughs> Eleven takes you on the road with the Texas Rangers as they face the Chicago White Sox in a back-to-back -back challenge. Don't miss the baseball fun tomorrow night at 7.30 on KTVT, your Rangers headquarters. But stay with us now as Jason Robarts and Stephanie Powers star in part five of Washington Behind Closed Doors. Next.